What's going on, MFs? Um, welcome back to the Snake Pit. This is episode 222. Our guest today is Double O Mac. Um, before we get into the episode, I would like to shout out to give a shout out to our sponsors, um, The Humble Hustle. He is a, he does screen printing and graphic design. So if you're like a business or a brand and you need some merch done, he's your guy. He does really good quality work, good um, good quality screen printing. Um, you can hit him up at 806-778-9498. Or you can message him on Instagram at humblehustle underscore J or on Facebook, The Humble Hustle. Our other sponsor for today is Unlucky Barber Co. So if you go to the barber shop, you need a haircut in that style. These guys are great. They're um, got this really cool lounge masculine vibe going. Um, it's real, real bro vibe. So if that's your thing, go do these guys. You can go to Christian Romero, Brandon Alvarado, or Adam Ruiz. You can visit their website, unluckybarberco.com to book now. You can follow them on Instagram at unluckybarberco. Or you can visit them in person at 261430th Suite 15. Cool dudes. They just dropped their, um, recently they just dropped some merch from the past that I think a lot of people like. So you can visit the website and buy that. These two guys support local. They help local people out and it just makes Lubbock an all around great, great place. So I highly advise you give them your business to help you out. Um, today our episode is with Double O Mac. Uh, he's an artist here in Lubbock, Texas. He is on Spotify, YouTube, pretty much anywhere you can get music. Check it out. I think he just released a song and, um, with the, with the guy who's going to come on the podcast later in the future. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It was fun. And, uh, thank you. Three more days too, but they're all at 1045. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. I'll probably go do that either way. Yeah. These crazy motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> have y'all heard of this movie? Oh, Skeena so Marie? We're going to start the podcast. Skeena Marie. Is it good? Um, you seen it? Don't tell me too much, but did you like it? It's very unique. Um, production style yeah it's very, it's super very, low budget it's, it's 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 eerie it's eerie like if you're like, um oh man, I'm so scared uh, uh, <laughs> it's a horror movie yeah, oh, oh yeah I'd, I'd watch them old horror like movies psychology. definitely not scary <laughs> oh did i get you a water where do you go yes he okay. got me one all righty so there you go skin marink double o mac here in the podcast studio. What's up? For another episode. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm great. I'm great to be here. Dude, I'm glad to be here. Excuse thank me. you for being here. Um, I'm excited. This is your first time being interviewed or anything, right? Yeah, yeah. Podcast I, interview. Hell yeah, dude. How you feeling? Shoot, I'm honored, honestly, to be on this platform. For Especially, the, yeah. you know, the the track record y'all have. Y'all stay consistent. It's what I love about it the most. We're trying. We have to. If I don't do that, then these will never get out. Yeah. So you're gonna go for the record here, uh, Vil, uh, for the <laughs> for this blunt being lit the whole time. Yeah. We'll see. But we'll see. Um, if I can, you know, roll up during the interview, it's really <laughs> up to y'all. So. Yeah, man. Um, we were talking about it earlier. Can you kind of go over it again? Um, your music style, trap wave. Yeah. Yeah. I call it I call it new wave. new wave. It's just like a personal term for it. It's got it's a hit it's a genre within the hip hop genre. It's got trap influence and a little bit of R and B influence too, more trap in, than R and B, but you know, a little, you know, melodicness in it. I like to sing a lot. People want me to rap like rap rap, but I sing a lot. Like damn near every song I have, I'm singing <laughs> damn near. Do you have any um sort of musical um like have you taken singing lessons or anything that you just self-taught kind of stuff dude self-taught from the jump okay like when i was you know in elementary school super young my dad had his own studio he was self-produced self-taught all everything that he taught me or showed me he didn't really teach me but i kind of was around music growing up also used to sing in the choir around you know middle school high school so that's where the i guess the singing experience was cultivated but other than that like i started off making beats when i was going to tech around 2014 2015 and it kind of just took off from there i was you know heavy into making beats and just making 
great beats. And it the thing, the crazy thing about it is I was I was I was so I guess different in terms of my sound that I felt like as soon as I play I would play some of my beats, people they wouldn't, you know, automatic you know when you hear a song come on and you you just automatically connect to it, you can tap your feet, you can bob your head. It wasn't like that at first, just cause I was new to the game. But I guess I kinda started making song songs when, well hell, nobody wants to get on these beats, I'll get them. I'll get on them type shit. And so 2020 started that whole thing. And I was like, well shit, I got time and resources, might as well start dropping music. And it kinda it kinda grew from there. But before that, I was a producer in a a record label, real like not a huge label. It's a it's an official business, Two O Entertainment. That started in that whole movement started in 2017 with my younger brother, um, some artists that he was linked up with early King Cortex, Double O Tweet. We got it's a whole rap sheet of artists that that are you know in the collective. But I started making beats, you know, supplying beats for them as a part of their production team. And it's just, I guess it's just evolved to just something way more. So you're in a, like a sort of a group. Yeah. Where are y'all from? Y'all not from here, right? You have a different area code on your text messages. Yeah, That's why I was wondering. I'm from Dallas originally. Oh, okay. Yeah, I came out here to go to tech. <laughs> and I just found a home out here. Started, you know, building, networking to an extent. But what 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 was the or is the the hip hop and rap culture like in Dallas? I feel like that's where Texas culture is. Yeah, I really do. And it's, they're getting a Universal Studios, by the way. It's are they? Yeah, they are. Just Man, I need today. to stay up. What's what, what's going did on? Did you see that Yeah, the Universal Studios. Did you see that? No, I did not. See it's that. coming to Dallas. Oh, yeah, cool. a lot of. I love Dallas. I feel of, like it's it's because Austin is his own thing. I love Austin, but. Dallas is like Texas. It is like aside from you know Austin, it, it's it's like its own hub. Yeah. Houston is its own hub as well. And I think Dallas is like the new hub because it's I'm got thinking. a lot of new artists, new sounds, and it's a lot of variety. Like to be honest, Dallas has probably the what most range of you know different styles like of artists that I've ever experienced. The city, it's just the city. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of admitting that. Yes, yeah, it is. I love it's Dallas. cooler than Austin right now. I think. Just gonna say it. It yeah. is. It's Dude, a spot. It's proud to, I'm like proud the, to hear that being like from the, there. <laughs> but yeah, what was it like growing up in that? Was it? Is it competitive? Is it a lot of? Was it supportive? In terms of uh, see, that's the thing. I guess it's changing and evolving because a lot of the times my pops would tell me the problem with Dallas. I guess it's Dallas people or Dallas Dallas artists. They don't. They don't want to. I guess collaborate and play their part. Everybody want to be the forefront of, I guess, the city, and that's, I guess, that's what it was like, you know, in the past. But since everything is expanding, everybody's collabing a lot more, and you know, from what I'm seeing, and it's, it's probably gonna change the game. I feel like it'll be, you know, on a level of Houston, of you know, L.A., New York, Atlanta. You Might know, already be. You think so? I, I honestly do think so. I may be sleep, sleep. But yeah, <laughs> as long as, to be honest, as long as we can, you know, stick together, hold each other down, do good business, and not try to fuck each other over, play our part type shit, then, you know, the city can grow. You you said that, like learning, being in that group you were in, mm -hmm. making beats for them, did that help you learn your part? Like Yeah, yeah, because you know? at first... Like I, I didn't, I you know everybody wants to be a rapper, but well, everybody, I would say everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to be a star. You're There's right. Nothing wrong with that. You're right, it's, and there's nothing wrong with that because everybody is a star in their own aspect. This way I see it, like you're the best at being you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? There's nobody better than you at being you. You know what I'm saying? You heard that, Jake the Snake, motherfucker? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> he stole my name. That's why I said that. <laughs> yeah, you should have copyrighted it. Yeah, so we all stars in our own aspect, but um, I'm definitely <coughs> willing to play my part. And I'm the type I, I observe. I'm an observer. When I was in school, I was an observer. So I knew, you know, the popular kids, the stars, you know, the misfits and, you know, the in-betweens. And I was kind of, you know, wait, making my way through, you know, all those groups. So 
I know what it's like to be on a team, you know, playing football, basketball, knowing that, you know, it's a cold ass motherfucker on your team. And, you know, you can trust him with the, you know, the last shot type shit. And even though you may not be at that level, you can do your part. Yeah. Say, because when I was when I started playing ball early, I was, you know, defensive guy, defense, defense, defense. Football? Um, honestly, yeah, football and basketball. Oh, basketball. Yeah. I was on, yeah, I was a DB in football. I was a defensive back. But, yeah, I knew my part. And a lot of people, I guess, get jealous when they're not in the forefront. I'm just not that way. I, I, and to be honest, I like to be around collectives and creatives that I feel like are on a level I'm trying to get to because it kind of sets a standard for me. So who are you be uh, who are you doing that with here? You know, <laughs> you're kind of creating something here. Yeah, I'm I like to say I'm one of the the founding fathers of the, you know, 2O Entertainment cuz I was, you know, producer for them since the beginning. So I what I did really out here cuz my little brother was, you know, making a name. You know, he's going to Cali, he's going to Houston, making buzz out in Dallas doing his thing. And I'm kind of, you know, recruiting who I feel like are you know, good artists and had, bring a new style because I guess that's what I take pride on, you know, being yourself, being your own style, not being, you know, a clone of somebody else. And, yeah, that's just who, that's just how, you know, I pick the artists that I want to work with. That and how bad do you want to do this? Like, are you hitting me up? Like, let's record, let's record, let's record. Because most, all of the artists that I work with and I feature with, they get free studio time, all that. It's about, you know, do you want to do this type shit? You have a studio here? Um, I have a home studio. I have equipment. <laughs> it's some studio. But I do my best. Yeah, it's like we were and talking I'm, about earlier. We got to make do what we have, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't want to toot my own horn, but compared to, you know, some artists, I'm putting out a, you know, a good quality sound and I still have room to grow, but that in itself, I feel like I take pride in, you know, creating a quality sound with limited resources because there's no excuse. It's no excuse. Yeah. If you want to do I something, you can that. do that shit. That's what I love you to hear on it. this podcast. For real. That's what I'm saying. Now, do you think um, like a young hip hop artist should learn production and should learn how to make beats and should like learn it all? You know, um, that's really important. I think if they want to save money. Okay. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do it the right way, like actually treat your career like a business, you got to pay for beats. You got to pay for studio time, mixing, mastering, covers, promotion, all that shit. So if you want to save money, it'd be good to, you know, learn everything, everything you want to learn. Say if you want to make beats, yeah, learn, learn if you want to. And you can rap too. That'll make, that's why, Honestly, that's why I can drop at a volume that I, I dropped six projects last year and two singles. And that's because I, I make my own beats. I record, I mix, I master my all, all my shit. So it's like, I just I just like to push it out. Where'd you learn all that? Just YouTube University? Or where'd you learn how to? Just YouTube trial University, <laughs> trial and error. Because yeah. like I said, I put out six projects. And like the first project I put out in 2022 like, if you heard it compared to the last one, you'd be like, damn, it's, it's some growth. So it's oh, nice. definitely with some trial and error in terms of quality and, you know, lyrics and beats and stuff. Yeah, I'm always I, I keep saying that I, I need to I just want to observe somebody making music yeah. like in that sense. I just want to see how it starts from <laughs> scratch and ends up in a final product because it's. Dude, it's I, weird to I'd think be, about, kind of. I'd be willing to show you. You yeah. know, I just bring my laptop, my mic, and interface, and a mic stand. And that's literally, can I you, can fit it all in my backpack. Can you write me a, a, a song and I'll, I'll sing it? It's <laughs> <laughs> just you a funny have little spoof. get into my, my songwriting bag, but yeah. I think that'd be fucking funny as hell. <laughs> just drop a single. You guys going to hold down? Yeah. Because the way it looks like it, I got to do stand up comedy because I lost a bet. So I'll knock out two things in one. What's the bet? It was in my other podcast, the sports one. What was it? Just we did points oh. for like guessing the games, mm -hmm. and um, I lost. So so you got to do stand up. I got to do three minutes of stand up this year, probably in March. So 
Oh. I'm like, fuck it. Why not drop a fucking song too, man? Just get <laughs> okay, it all, you know? Bet. Just be, a, just have it like all. Bet, what style <laughs> are you going for in terms of production? Can you, let me, uh, let me put, I, you know, first time I want to play a song. Uh, yeah. It's called. Oh, no. Yeah, it's called. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> this is what God I'm going for. God damn it. Here, I'll let you search it so nobody can hear it. <laughs> search that song on the tube, please. Maybe we can uh, get like 30 seconds of it. <laughs> Fucking funny. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you gotta do it another first. You, know. you already know what it is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. I'm now. sure you've heard it before. Is it like a parody song? I don't know. No. I don't know if this guy's it's, serious. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. It's the first one. <laughs> yeah, that one right there. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, have you heard this? No. Oh, hell yeah. You should have clicked on the music video. Is this it? I think this yeah, is it. Yes, I Um... Blue yeah. She tried yeah. to relate. Here we go. And then I fucking turn around and hit her. Oh. And then she's like, why the fuck you hit the. I know you want to sing along. Come on. No. Yeah. Right, let's do like turns. Bro. Bursting. <laughs> We gotta write a song like this. And this you talking about something. Alright, you're gonna have to come up with the, the whispering sound. You're, you're, he does it really but good. I can, I can do the, it so good. I can do the beat for sure. Dude, I've been practicing it. Yeah, I was has. annoying the hell out of Jim. Practicing. And bro, practicing. <laughs> to be honest, I'm so I'm so off the wall in terms of like what I like something is That's different true. is that you know I'm not playing that song every day but I'm not I don't I guess I don't cut I don't sh <laughs> count him less of an artist you know what I'm saying yeah I haven't quite figured out if he's serious or not who knows it's a hit. It was on TikTok and shit that's where I discovered it so. yeah and shoot if the kids like it that's the thing in terms of the mainstream industry the kids the kids run the industry they run it TikTok man that's why you fucking do it. That's how you get your name over there. Are you stoned to the bone right now? No, my headphones went out. No, they're coming back. Oh, okay. That's what so, I was messing with. I'm listening. I just made um, shit was fucked up. But so are you collaborating with people here? You working Hell with Hell yeah. Have you ever heard of Dalen Holman? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I collab with him a lot. He was on almost all of my projects last year. I collab with my boy Dreamy over here. Yeah, we're gonna um, get him on the podcast soon. Yeah, so you guys will yeah, see him get probably ready. very soon. Get ready. Did you see his shirt? I, thought, I was about to say that's a nice shirt. I just noticed that oh, yeah. his phone was covering it the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. But um, I got a song out with Young Wild. I sent you know I sent some beats to K Sweets. I'm trying to think who am I? Who well, I was just asking because you because we were talking about earlier too like. You're going to be more involved in the scene now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, on some real shit, I need to hit him up about it. Um, I'm trying to make a, I'm trying to get a tape out with Alpha Savage. I like his, his flow is crazy. I, I love I feel like you flow. guys are kind of like in like the same, almost even like aesthetic and like yeah. style. Yeah. So. Shoot. I, he probably like anime more than I do. He's into that shit, isn't he? Mm -hmm. You know what he's into? Mukbang. What is it called? Mukbang? Mm -hmm. Mukbang. Mukbangs. He likes that shit. I don't know. Do you like it? He makes a mean ramen noodle. Like, like if, last it's, if it's got like the right recipes. ingredients, I'm going to love it. Well, ramen's good, but are you into that mukbang shit? Do you watch that? You any y'all watching that I fucking know, weird man. shit? I've he keeps telling it. me to do it. I'm like, no I've way, dude. It, but, <laughs> it's fucking weird. But what's what's the gist of it? I haven't like really I watched. Really watched watching them. Asian ladies eat. Fucking ramen? I don't know. Oh, um, I mean, I thought ramen. a mukbang was just like a big ass bowl of food. No, yeah. it's like the video. It's like the actual video of you eating it. The oh, that you stuff your face. Yeah. Oh, that, dude, I do that every day. So, yeah. <laughs> but shout out to Alpha Savage and Emo Glock. I think yeah, that's what he's yeah. he's doing I'm right now. I have to get some merge. I'm yeah, he's some merge. I like I like the self made. You know creatives the ones that make you know the most of the resources 
Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. If you come out to these shows and stuff, that's everybody. Everybody's just bit. trying to figure it out, dude. That's a bit. And, dude, I've linked up with... My mind is just blanking right now, but I'll start rolling off more artists. <laughs> In about 10 minutes, everybody's going to be too high to continue this podcast. No, nah, I'm not. Just Sometimes I get so high <laughs> you sober that I up? sober up. You sober up. Yeah, it's crazy. I'll, I'll no, come back it's around. crazy, bro. Don't judge me. Like, yeah. I'll probably yeah. close my eyes for about two minutes and I'll just I'll just be out of it. <coughs> like, I got to smoke some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm interested in that. Uh... Yeah, like she was saying, you and, you and Alpha have like the same kind of thing going on almost. Yeah. I don't want to like group y'all um, together yeah but yeah, for sure I'm it's very interesting i, 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 I definitely would say i'm somewhat of a i guess misfit you know mm -hmm. just because i've been i never i never linked with just one crowd i was you know I, I was cool with everybody but i was still that lone wolf you know what i'm saying i literally rose a year i probably ate lunch alone like nigga just got his got his shit and left the cafeteria. I was like, fuck this shit. One of my favorite things, like, and then you kind of like remind me of this is like, like one of my favorite things about myself is like I can embody all my friend groups and all like the like almost like all like all the lives we've lived. You know what I mm -hmm. mean so far. And it's just like there's like one of my favorite quotes is, um, "I'm the combined effort of everyone I've ever known." You know what I mean? And I feel yeah. like. Alpha's kind of like that where he's just he's so many different styles of one person and he's very like do it all yourself and you know in the same way that you guys do music and right. that's kind of what and I think that's kind of reminded me of I think it's also I wasn't influenced by just one culture you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying I've been influenced by all type of cultures mm -hmm. like my first like eight kindergarten to eighth grade I was in an area of Dallas that was mainly Latino. So I was, you know, around a bunch of Latinos. Then it was a time that I was around. I was literally the only black kid in this school. This white. Like Mexican? This, oh. No, no, no. This oh. white. This all white kids. I was like, damn, I'm the only one here. And then when I got up to high school and shit, I was just started linking with my, you know, my own. Yeah. What were you, some of your influences? in, Like musically? Yeah, music. Uh, My mom took me to church a lot. So church music is like a good base. Um, hip hop growing, I guess growing up, I thought about the timeline like today, actually, like when we were younger, what was going on on the radio was, you know, in, in terms of hip hop and R&B, I was listening to. And then I got into Lil Wayne and then I kind of, I don't know, bro, I just I just fell off. I just stopped listening to him and I got into Wiz. I got in the currency. I got in the big crit, and I got a kind of in that into the underground scene. And then when I got out to college, that's when I really started listening to mainstream stuff. So it was I, I kind of was influenced by underground, mainstream, church music, R and B, kind of a lot of shit. I'm open to so many styles of music. Like, um, I don't know if you sh you was there. When Strawberry Season was playing at the at that 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 hectic uh, show, I was good. jamming the hell out because I just appreciate live music. So any any good work of art, I'm open to listening to and just taking in, and whatever is in me is gonna come out. So that's why I feel like I'm a little unique. I liked them. Strawberry Season, yeah, man, they're really good. That was my first time seeing them. It was that night. Really Crazy good. story. I was walking my dog, Mac. Yeah, Mac. If I knew we were gonna be here, I, I should have brought him. But um, oh my god, we would have loved that. We I came across them. I just seen this this group of guys unloading their band equipment. And I just I, I didn't know who they were. I didn't know who they were. I just you know started chopping it up with them, asking them you know y'all got to practice. I'm like yeah, we strawberry season. I looked them up on YouTube, and shoot, when I was coming back. They was in there jam. I heard them from across the street jamming out. Yeah, nice. So I was like, it was it was kind of cool to see, you know, see them, see all that practice or all that behind the scenes in the forefront. Cause homies did their thing. Uh homeboy with the trumpet, he was getting my attention the whole night. Can you look me up on on their place? Yeah, they yeah. were good. They were uh, good. You know as weird as the lead singer. He's from Post, and he used to hang out with my stepbrother. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that until like, I saw them. 
last year. And yeah. he was like, hey, you remember me? I was like, motherfucker, what the hell? <laughs> Strawberry season? Oh, I just thought of an artist. Um, He's a producer. Uh, Fresh Ranks Beats, Johnny Rank. Fucking Johnny. He needs to text me back. And I just bro, realized that, too. He's the homie, bro. I I, I really, I like his I like his work ethic. He's a hard worker. Yeah, he's he like somebody that's at that level I'm trying to get to. But, yeah, he, I want to, you know, scrape up some money, pay him, get some beats, and <laughs> have him produce that whole shit, either this year, this year or next year. That's somebody I want to work with. Yeah, that dude right there, you know, my brother. He's not my brother. So you, um, they were just at some random house and you saw them fucking practice? Yeah, up. yeah, I was literally walking down the street and I saw them unloading their equipment and shit. I was just, I love music. It was at the point where I, I don't care what genre you you in. I'm willing to hear what you, what, what work you've put in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, I'm starting a new series on um, Patreon, patreon.com slash Studios. Where we listen to music and seeing that you fucking like to smoke a lot. I was thinking like Can four of us, <clears throat> people smoking, not me. And we like have music to listen to. Yeah. So that'd be pretty fun to do. Hey. Conversation pit stolen from uh, oh, actually, yes. I created hey, that name. You... <laughs> not Jennifer. <laughs> no, yeah. If you do that, oh, I'm, your I'm, muse. I'm, 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 I'm so muse. down. I'm telling, I'm telling you. you. I'm telling you right now. Oh my hey, God. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. We're doing episode Just one tomorrow, me. but. Next week on Thursday, if you want to do it, I'll be here. We'll do like twenty minutes and I'll put it on here. Patreon. Do we do like an album or like a, just a few songs that you're vibing to? I think to. we should do like we do a few songs at first, but like oh my god, like classic albums, whatever or, you know, well, whatever you want to do when you're a classic. Oh, because these guys who I stole the idea from, not gonna lie, <laughs> they were listening to uh, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Like classical music and shit, yeah. dude. And then one guy dropped the bomb. It was like metal music. Yeah, <laughs> it was fucking weird. But I was like, damn, that's a good idea. Sorry, y'all up with like cockroaches by Nail Bomb or something. Yeah, we could all have a a song that we pick or a group of songs. <laughs> no, that's what the whole idea is. So oh yeah, a bit. If you want to do it, yeah, yeah, I'm with that. I feel like you'd that. be a good vibe for it. I'm with that. Bring it. So I don't again. I don't want to group you. Sort of a stoner vibe. Yeah, no, you, you, you got the. <laughs> Yeah, you you definitely got it. What kind of music do you listen to when you? Um, do you ever just like smoke and listen to music? Outside of my own, like yeah. recently, outside of my own, I'll go through. To be honest, I'll, I'll listen to a lot of beats. I've been listening to a lot of beats because I'm, you know, trying to make new shit. So I've been listening to a lot of beats. But to be honest. If I were to go outside of my comfort zone, I'd let somebody else take the, you know, the wheel. Because one of my roommates in college, he put me on a so much classic rock. And I'm like, dude, just here, you take whatever. Because as long and it's crazy, people, people down the weed. But it opened my mind to just <coughs> accepting, you know, more shit. Don't let people. Chris fucking do it. Because what was he playing on Friday, that oh. idiot? I don't know what the hell he was playing. <laughs> he was playing some fucking dumb <laughs> shit, man. I'm... Chris listens to Logic. Although. I love you, buddy. Although, he did play Big Crit, and I never heard him. Good. What do you think? I'll, I'm I'm into it. Yeah. Some pretty fire shit. So, like, what is he... it? Big Crit? Big Crit? Is that man. Yeah, 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 yeah. That motherfucker's good. He is cold. He needs, <laughs> I feel like he needs more more notoriety. Because, like, dude, is he kind of underground? A, yeah, he's yeah. definitely underground. He's he's proud to be underground. Actually, he, it's just like a part of his brand. Like, proud to be a proud Chris. to be underground. But um, like he he's another one that inspired me. Another self produced artist. Like a few of his like the mixtape game. I want to say around 2020, 2012 to two thousand eight. That 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 time span. Like the mixtape game was heavy. Was, Lil Wayne. Yeah, Lil Wayne. I was downloading all his mixtapes. Hell yeah. Wiz, fucking pretty much all the popular artists. And Big Crit was, you know, putting out tapes at the same time. And all, like, I feel like five of his first, you know, few tapes, five, not few, <coughs> five of his, you know, first tapes was like all of his beats, all his recording, everything. And the shit was a vibe. It was a vibe. It's like he's real Southern. Is he and He's from Mississippi. Oh man, Mississippi, oh, so. yeah, and he he's super southern, super southern. I like that shit, but yeah, dude. So we'll do the <laughs> conversation pit probably next week Bet. with you. 
We'll see how oh that goes. Oh my god, it's so exciting. Yeah, you gotta subscribe. Five dollars a month, people. So there you go. I'm down with that. <laughs> Do you think um weed elevates you into another like creative level? No. For you anyways? No. No, it doesn't. It don't have a different like people will tell me like whatever I'm on, I'm the same. The same. Like I can make the same, you know, type of shit while I'm high in terms of beats. The same when I'm sober, when I'm drunk. It may be, you know, certain aspects of it where you could probably tell I was high or you tell I was a little tipsy or, you know, sober on top of my shit. But for the most part, I got a hold on all that shit. Except alcohol. Like, I'm a lightweight with that. Yeah, I was wondering. Some people. I just like to smoke. I just got out, you know, college and shit. I just picked up the habit. And I like to. (laughs) Yeah, I was wondering. I know some people like feel like it does elevate them to another level. You know, people are different. It gets me definitely more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, less. um, Kind of breaks down the walls for you. Yeah. I guess I care less with, you know, say if I'm in a setting and I was recording with, you know, with some homies, it made me less. I care less about what they think if I messed up a line or, you know, whatever. Rather than if I was sober, I'd be like, fuck. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but if I was high, it'd be like a, a funny type thing. Um, what is it like when you drop your mixtape or your album? What's that initial feeling like? Do you get nervous? Are you scared? No. Do you feel vulnerable? I feel honestly. Uh, is it uh, relief? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because damn, bro, it's a whole process. Because the process that I go through and doing, say, if I wanted to do a project a week, maybe four to five days on, you know, production, a week, another week, four to five days recording, mixing, and then getting, you know, content ready for the drop. So at by the point, by the time it drops, I'm I'm relaxing because I'm so burnt out. I'm so burnt out, you know, after doing all that shit, because it gets tiring. What's it, like? Do you have like a period where you're not doing music after you drop something? Yeah. Take a little break. Yeah, it'll be like. It'll probably honestly be like longer than the periods that I do just hammer at it because you know you got to take care of life and shit but at the same time i'm still at least listening you know tapping it and see that's where i tap into new shit like whoever's dropping new shit that's where i listen to it shoot i may get into making content for the music that i drop you know videos all type of you know social media content pictures shit like that you guys have done music videos together you too yeah he's he's he shot Video right there with the lighter. That's actually the video. Yeah, that's dropping Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, I'm real melodic. I've been getting high lately. Don't want to pack if it's shaky. I love the money it chase me. The struggle is never gonna break me. Yeah, I like to see people doing new things, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You, uh, in terms of music videos, are you pretty controlling over it, or do you kind of let him do his thing? Uh, I let the videographer, director <coughs> do their thing, because I may have a vision or, you know, a few key points that I want to add in. But other than that, I let them do their thing. I let them do their thing, because... Otherwise, why why would I why would I be coming to you, type shit? You know what I'm saying? Hell, if That's I could do point. it myself, I'd be shooting the <laughs> video myself. That's a fucking good point. <laughs> <laughs> you drop that on your YouTube? What the music video? Uh, it's gonna be on Grim's YouTube. It's uh Grim shot it, G R I M space H S H O T space I T. <laughs> Oh, so man. yeah, y'all subscribe. What sort of uh, anime are you into? You're a, you're a big anime guy, right? Semi. I I like <clears throat> Dragon Balls. I like the typicals, the like the normal shit, the people that I guess everybody, the shit that everybody knows about. 
Uh, I'm in the Dragon Ball Z. I fuck with Naruto. I fuck with, you know, My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan. I love Attack on Titan. Who's that on your shirt? It's Itachi Uchiha from Naruto. Naruto. Yeah. It's my, yeah. Fav- it's my favorite all time. Did you guys ever watch that? No. What about Dragon Ball Z? Kind of. No. Yeah, I know I a lot of people. Too. I watched Sailor Moon. That's one I've probably seen episodes of. That's what I grew up on. I was like obsessed. Yeah. You actually like watching it? Uh huh. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Is it older? Um, It's like been continuous. I think it's over now. I haven't like kept up with it or anything. Now, does some of that have an influence in your music? Yeah, in terms of lyrics. Yeah. Like I mentioned, like I have a whole a whole song where I make a bunch of references. But yeah, and to be honest, it anime, especially Naruto as of late, just the whole in-depth story that they have with the characters and stuff and, you know, the development, it kind of, it teaches me life lessons and shit that, you know, my parents may not have been able to teach me, you know what I'm saying? And so it made me more accepting the people, you know, and what they have probably went through, you know, in their life, not judging people too quickly, being open to really everybody and what they've gone through and be willing to understand them, you know what I'm saying? I guess that's what it did. It helped me, you know, be more willing to understand people and what they went through and how it shaped them, whether it be good or bad. It's an important thing to kind of learn, huh? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it is, man. I think so. That's why I like podcasts. You get to learn about people. Right. Because sometimes I I judge people a lot and I have to slow down. Me too. Because I get mean. Me too. I, sh- <laughs> dude. <laughs> and then, you don't know to have. And then fucking people hate me on the podcast. Like, oh, for real? I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> you know, I try not to be too opinionated. But No, nah, but that's the thing. I want I want to I wanna know. Yeah. I want you to be honest. I want you to be honest. That's what I want from everybody. I want you to be honest with me. Yeah. I mean, and I'm I guess, open to understanding. You know why. Yeah, I guess I, as I've gotten older, I, I realize people grew up differently. They're not the same. Like people do different things, and yeah. I just will never understand why. And it's not up for me to understand why. Yeah, it's just there. And different. I try to, but I, I did anyways in the past. I'm like, yeah, it's their life. Yeah, and yeah. I need to chill. <laughs> that takes a while to understand. Yeah, because I grew up with hardcore men. Just yes, you know, you know the the Mexicanos kind of kind of living. Yeah, because them Mexican dads are can be some hard asses. Yeah, uh, dads, uncles, cousins. Yeah. Ooh. Shit, it made y'all some hard ass <laughs> men though. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, because with me, of course, my dad, then I had three brothers, and so one mom, no sisters or anything. Oh me. So when it's just all men, that your personality is very different compared to growing <laughs> up with sisters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you learned all that in an anime. About it. Kinda. It helped you. Yeah, it helped your, me. Your anime. It helped me because you know, coming up under, you know, who you were raised, you kind of, you have your morals and everything set in stone until you, you know, open yourself to new shit and be understanding. That's the thing. Even, even coming up, my mom was like, always try to understand people. You know what I'm saying? It's always, people are always go through whatever they go through or, you know, do whatever they do for a reason. And that's just how they cope, whether it be good and bad or bad. Now, does your music reflect kind of your life and your life experience? Uh, I have, yeah, yeah. You try to. You were you were saying you wanted more substance in your. Yeah, in I your do. Lyrics. I do make references about you know my lifestyle. It's more lifestyle rap mm-hmm. at this point, you know. But I want to say on that. EP, the new wave fire, the fire new wave volume three EP out now. That's where I really, you know, got into songwriting about, you know, personal shit. Cause at that point I was changing. I was changing. I was going through a change. And when you changing, that shit's hard. Cause it's like a, it's literally a chemical imbalance. You're not used to doing this new shit. You know what I'm saying? So. It was just me going depth and shit. The new, the change in the lifestyle. Going through that right now. Running my two miles every day. Did you run today? How yeah, was it? Yeah, I did. It fucking sucks. 
It's okay. Doing you're gonna, a, I'm, you're I'm doing two miles it. every day this month. You're going to love it. You're going to love sober. it at the end. You're going to love it. I'm fucking sober. So I'm like, God damn it. But that's I guess gonna, change is good. That's going to make it, bro. I'm telling you. If you stay sober and keep running, you're going to love it at the end of that month or by 60 days, if not 90 days. What if I went 90 days straight? Dude. I'll be fucking dead. That'd be awesome. No, nah, you'd be in the best shape <laughs> well, of your running, life. not running, but like. No, nah, I've. I'm also speaking on what we were earlier, like I'm learning as I'm older, you got to change. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of the balance I'm learning in life right now is being who I am, but also changing because mm -hmm. we're going through big changes here on this podcast. And I was like, kind of want to stick to who we are and what we were doing. But, yeah. You know, the growth was kind of slow. So we got to. Yeah. Kind of branch out. Changes around, you know, so but have still... you noticed any progress? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. in. Uh, any improvements? Yeah. But I'm. I also noticed myself wanting to go back to the old, you normal, know, you got to break yeah, that fucking habit normal. of being who your old self was. And your, does your music reflect sort of that way? Yeah. Like your old stuff and then your new stuff. In terms of quality, it's, yeah. it's better. But I, I guess my sound is evolving to an extent. Um, We'll see. What are your plans for 2023? 2023. With the music. Drop more music. I'm, I want to drop a project with Alpha Savage, one with my boy Dreamy over here, one with Dalen Holman. Who else? I want to do one with my brother, Double O Daredevil, like the leader of this whole shit, you know. Double O Daredevil? Yeah. Cool. Daredevil. That, he's a daredevil. But... um. Like here in the, in the honestly, whoever whoever wants to collab, you know what I'm saying. Those are right off the top. My boy Johnny Boy, my boy Double O Ham. I, I want to do you know more work with them, even though they've been on my projects. But I'm just trying to do just collab more. Have you been out to these house shows that they do here? I've been to one, dude, bro. I've been to one. I think. Um, I don't know who was playing there, but I, I do know they was playing one of the Naruto fight themes. And that shit had me so lit. That <laughs> shit had, yeah, it was, I don't know who, I don't know what band it was. Was it a band? It was a band. Maybe it was an analog junkie or something. It was yeah. a band, but they were playing like, because they have, you know, battle scenes in the anime and they were playing the music that they would, you know, play in the battle scenes. And I'm like, yo, my homeboy, Johnny Boy, he pointed it out to me like, bro, this is the theme in the arts. I was like, yo, it is. And that's that's the only house show I've been to. I want to go out to more. But that just experience there, I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm I'm up to see whoever is fucking, you know, up to perform. I know Young Watt performed that one, too. Yeah, they, they usually... That's why I was asking, like, is that something you would want to do? Hell yeah. Then? If I ever get, you know, uh, invited, you know uh, what I'm saying? I think you got to invite yourself, my friend. Really? I'm, I'm being honest. Like, just hit them up and they'll fucking put you on. So bother them, Maybe. bother them like shit. Why not? All right. See, see what happens. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch it up because <laughs> I was subtle last year. I, you know, hit them up a couple of times and, you know, be, be done with it. But I'm going to let them know I'm serious. Well, Maybe. No disrespect, this podcast will help them, help you. I appreciate you know, that. They'll, they'll I appreciate see, that. See you, because I want to see you perform live at these things, because there's house shows, uh, First Friday Art Trail. Yeah. They do like the, what's it called, the plug and play? Yeah, studio floor, the plug and play. Nice. Just jump on there. Yeah. Bro, I'd be down. So I'm telling you, man. I'm going to hit them up. It's out there. You just got to go. I don't, know, I don't know how they do the lineup, but I'm pretty sure they'd be willing to. Accommodate for you yeah. if you're yeah. serious, anyway. So. Yeah, I'm, dude. <laughs> if I'm not I'm mistaken, you, bro, I'm a, I gotta get on one. Of the shows. It's one of those things of like, if you just go around, you'll meet people and you'll just be like, "Hey, how'd you get on?" And they'll be like, "Oh, talk to Eli, talk to oh Emma, yeah Emma, talk to," and you'll be like, "Hey, what's up?" Hell yeah! That's, that's I think that's literally how that. <laughs> yeah. I need to just go out to them shows. Y'all <laughs> yeah. know when the next one is? Because uh, I follow them, I just haven't been. I there's some in February. Okay. There's a Nirvana tribute show Ooh. next month. Ooh. Can I speak on that honestly? Uh huh. It's a sobriety like tribute, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. I don't know if I feel comfortable going to that. 
and being drunk going to that. Well, <laughs> just, don't, <laughs> do that. <laughs> just don't do that. <laughs> I wanted to go, but I was like, oh, it's her sobriety. You know? It's going to be cool, it's February. It's I'm going to be drunk. Covers. Oh, it's a cover? I thought they were just going to, okay. Yeah, it's cool. so like a Nirvana night cover thing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's going on. Yeah, that was just the plan there. <laughs> Shoot, I'll pop out. Yeah, dude, you got to go out. If, if I could give any advice to anybody who wants to like be in the scene and perform, you got to go to these shows. Like, There's no if, ands, or buts. You got to go and talk to these people. Gotcha. Yeah. It's the best way. Gotcha. That's why I go, because I want to meet more people. That's how I met you. Right, exactly. It was like, we didn't really go too much last year, but more so this year. Like, get yeah. more guests, yeah. you know, meet people. Because it's going on a lot. That's it's gonna a great be my way to strategy, sport. just you know, networking wise. Because I didn't go to enough shows. You're right. If I would, if I went to every damn near every event, I'd probably be in some of these lineups. But hell, it's a new year. I'm watching out for what everybody's doing. You know what I'm there saying? There you go, man. How do you feel about the Lubbock scene, if you will? Could you? Uh, my experience. You just. Have they been supportive of you? Like, have you felt support here? Uh, from my from my fan base, yeah. but shoot, until that, you know, until that's recognizable, then other people won't recognize. You know what I'm saying? That's how I see it. I'm not look. I'm not out here. You know, look at me, look at me. I'm definitely down the network, but you know what I'm saying. If I'm not the right fit, if I'm not the right sound for the, you know, lineup, whether that be rap, rock, whatever, I'm still down to support. But it's on it's on me to get these fans. You know what I'm saying? And if the fans, if the numbers show, they'll, you know, I'm thinking they'll be more willing to reach out. You know what I'm saying? Just with a local artist with a big fan base that comes out to their shows and networks with them and hangs with them and shit like that. Yeah, do you think Lubbock could be a place like what Dallas is? With Tom and, you know, the right effort from the right people. Yeah, that's what I'm... It's, that's what I'm trying to tell people. I think it's going to take a little time. Yeah. Five, ten years. My Maybe projection. more. Maybe more. I don't know if people got it in them to stick that long yeah. through it, man. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully. We'll see. But, yeah, you could definitely grow out here. You could build an audience anywhere, in my opinion. Yeah, are you active on the social medias, building out on social media? I try to be. In terms of posting and you know interacting with other people's content that I that I like actually like, I'm trying to do that more, and that's what that's honestly that's why I probably linked up with y'all because I first started seeing y'all on social media, and I seen a few of you know my friends on y'all show. I'm like, oh hell yeah, and I started fucking with y'all. I was like, hell yeah, and so social. I feel like social media definitely. Help the foundation of a lot of those relationships too, like Riley and Alpha. Like I, I interacted with them on social media before I even met them. So, yeah, I think it's a big part. Have you worked with Riley? Um, not. We haven't done anything, but you know, I just I was I've been supporting them since the Space Cowboy stuff. And oh, um, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. One of my um, one of the artists. Shout out to Key. Uh, he performed at one of his shows, and so I've been, you know, linked in and just chopping it up with him since then because I helped produce, you know, some of Key's shit, which was an artist that was on one of his shows. And so I'm like, yeah, he fuck with us. Shit, I'm going to fuck with him. And it was a good lineup. All the artists up there were definitely good artists. There was no trash artist that I could, you know, say was trash <laughs> or didn't deserve to be up there. When Riley needs to do another one of those. That was pretty fun. Yeah. Did you go to that one? Yeah. That was the longest time ago. That, that was like, like two, when we first met you. That was like two years ago. We had known each other for like a month. You brought like yeah. a GoPro <laughs> thing. Yeah. That's right. I think Bradley pulled up in a collared t shirt. Yeah, he did. He sure no, did. <laughs> that wasn't me. I know what exactly. It was a UT Dallas shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I am. No, no. It wasn't a collared shirt. So. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm excited to see what, <laughs> what, ha what fucking happens this year. A lot of people are doing a lot of things here. Yeah, I'm trying to be at least there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like the first start. I think a lot of people miss that. 
A lot of people don't realize like just being there. Yeah, is super important. And at the end of the day, in my my point of view, it's something to do. You know what I'm saying? I make music all weekend. You know, on the weekends when shit's going down, when I have downtime, I may want to sleep. I could be, you know, out networking, out actually having some fun. Hell yeah. You really about to pull it up, man. <clears throat> I think you already passed it. Bradley has receipts. Right there. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. You were right. <laughs> Yeah, we had known each other for like a month. Damn. 2021. 86 weeks ago. <laughs> oh, shit. You remember, you were like dying in that shirt. It fucking sucked. That was in the middle of summer. Uh-huh. Sheesh. Oh, my yes. God. You wore that in the summertime mm-hmm. out here? It's feeling good, though. I mean, I was looking good. <laughs> I was feeling good. Look at us. Oh, my God. That's when we first ever met. Mm. Heard that bark. So, so like story time. It's a <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's it's on camera. Like it's like one of his old podcasts. No. But like uh, it's unexplainable. Yeah, it, it was just it was just so. so. Isn't that crazy? Ooh, it makes me feel weird. So you read this? Oh, <laughs> I forgot who was this guy. Is that Courtney? Yeah, yeah, that's a little artist I'm trying to link with and make a tape with. That's another one. See, the more we get in depth, you know what I'm saying, the more the names come up. That's another artist. Shout out to Courtney. So you're both a friend of this? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Bradley got the footage. I still have a lot of that footage from that night. Is this on the phone? Yeah. Dude, I was looking into getting a GoPro. Like, the new one. Shit, was 600 dollars. I'm gonna be a bitch. 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 i not, not as much as I feel like he should have. That's not Courtney. I'm sorry. <laughs> but still, shout out to Courtney. That dude's from like Houston, I think. Kevin. So next song? Oh, he is from Houston. <laughs> so that's right there. <laughs> not available. Huh. He disappeared. Wow. He, uh, he probably just changed his username. What kind of dog do you have? He's a Australian Mac? Shepherd. How old is he? He's three. I've had him for three years. Is he mean? Hell no. He's the <laughs> nicest dog you'll ever meet. He's the nicest dog you ever meet, but he loves he loves the ladies. No matter if they humans, no matter if they dogs, he loves them. Oh, he loves the dog ladies? Yeah. He's a little Mac. <laughs> Can you look up that dog for me, Bradley? I'm going to look at it. I don't know why I can't yeah, he's picture a, my fucking a, head. A blue Merle Australian ship. Whose dog is this? Just look up Australian Shepherd, would you please, oh, young sure. Jamie? <laughs> Shout out to my guy Gold Soul. Do it right now. <laughs> no, I'm good. Are you good, Jim? Okay. You said a golden retriever? <laughs> What'd you say? Girl, uh, Australian an Australian dude. Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I'd like to get a golden retriever. Yeah, they're nice for dogs. a dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's she's fucking like Scout. Old. What the hell? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was like the full name of the dog. I was just calling. I mean, Aussies. she's a mini Aussie. I was just calling him Aussie. I thought they were different dogs. Does he look like? That? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, a. Hey, he's oh, like see, that I one. was on the right path. That's why I was asking if he was mean because my dog is fucking mean as hell. Yeah, they're uh, mean dogs. The person, the personalities vary. Mine yeah. has been, mine is chill. My uh, friend Hams, he, uh, we actually got our dogs on the same day. Um, her name is Lucy. <laughs> She's a feisty one, so they, you know, they can be hyper, they can be feisty, they can be chill. It really, I guess it depends on the owner and their personality. Max so chill because I'm so laid back, I guess. But if you if he doesn't know you and you step in the yard, he's going to bark. <laughs> and they bite hard, dude. I've been bitten by them motherfuckers. They were asking me if I like snakes, and I said no. Did I ever tell you I got bit by a snake? Jen? No, but I believe it. Were you, were you fucking with it? <laughs> it was hungry, and we were going to feed it, and it bit me. Damn. My friend had a little... What a bow 
the mini ones. I don't know what the fuck they're called, but mm-hmm. it, and that's it, where he became rattlesnake. Bit the fuck out of me, and I was like, "Yeah." Taki transforms. <laughs> it's his transformation uh, sequence. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't fuck with snakes. He just, he just snakes. screams. That's all my, he does. My friend has a chameleon. I want yeah. one of those. Those look cool. I like chameleons too. It, it fucking chews its tongue out at its dog in the yeah. eye. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see you that see in that action. I don't have my phone. So. Yeah, dude. So, uh, how many hours a week are you in the studio? Would you say? It depends. Um, if I'm working on a project. Bro, to be honest, I say it's about twenty to forty hours. Twenty on the low end, forty on the on the high end. Just dealing with the music, you know what I'm saying? Either listening to beats, because for me it's a whole process getting the the right beats, the right vibes. That takes time. Either making or listening, that takes time. And then either coming up with the lyrics, whether I want to come off the top or whether I actually want to write something. And shoot, just making it sound good is the best that I can. Mixing takes a, you know, a minute. And mastering, that's usually the quickest process. But yeah, that's how, that's that's the time I'm willing to dedicate, you know, outside, you know, pretty much all my free time. You know, when I don't work, I'm doing music, dealing something with the music, learning something about music, whether it's marketing, shoot, the business side, you know, all the avenues you can get paid because it's like it's a few avenues you can get paid with just dropping music honestly just dropping beat instrumental tapes people buy that stuff right um like, like you can you can put it up on like itunes and stuff and you can you do you could do like self-produced packages where your fans could buy it but for the most part people i assume they they consume music by streaming you know what i'm saying and shit like that but you know if you got a a strong core cult like cult like fan base, they'll buy anything from you. How does one build a cult like fan base? Because that is also what I'm trying to do. I'm trying, to, <laughs> trying to have these motherfuckers worship me. Yes. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I'm I'm honestly trying to figure that out too, <laughs> yeah. dude. And that's why I'm, you know, trying to stay learning about shit. Listen. Stay God reading, bless. watching YouTube you reading videos. Books? Yeah, I like to listen to books. What books? Um, one lately is um, Dale Carnegie's uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People just to, you know, improve my social skills and shit like that because I don't know. In some aspect, I was still socially awkward even though, you know, I'm, I'm kind of linked in with all these different groups of people. I don't know. Is this the audio book? You, you, you like to do the audio book of this? Yeah. I feel like my mom has this book. Like, it's an old book, but the principles still stand today. You know what I'm saying? I need to read more. And well, I, just need I, to read. I read all that to add value to my life so I can add value to, you know, others. So you're always trying to improve. Self-improvement. It's yeah. become ever since. Yeah. Yeah. A few years ago, honestly, 2020, bro, that shit kind of woke me up. I'm like, all right. When shit goes to hell, I can't I can't just be scrambling like these other people. I gotta have my mind, body, finances, everything ready for some shit like that. And so that's where self improvement hit, you know, diet, exercise. I've been walking my dog every day since twenty twenty. You know, walking How probably far y'all go? two plus miles yeah. every day. Those and guys need it, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Other than that, if I don't walk him in the evening, he's just chilling all day. And that's how they get fat. And that's how they die fast. We took Jen's dog for a walk. Little fucker. Yeah. Taking shits everywhere. Yeah. (laughs) Golly. I love Mac just because I can take him to any part, have him off the leash. He can do his own thing. He won't, you know, bother anybody. He won't run up on anybody. Damn. He'll come back when I call him. Like, it's been times literally he's wanted to chase a squirrel. But if I told him to sit and stay, he stayed there. So that's he's he's dog. that obedient. Damn, that's a good dog. Yeah, I can. Not my dogs. My dog <laughs> is fucking jet. Yeah. I've walked. I've literally walked Mac around like my neighborhood without a leash. He stood, stood right next to me. Stay right next to me. I never understood that. Like my dogs live the fucking golden life. I four. They all live the fucking softest, cushiest life. Any chance they get 
Two of them, actually, because the other one's fat. <laughs> two two of them. Any chance they get, they'll fucking run away. Really? And I'm just like, why? What, what's so good out there that you motherfuckers want to go and run away, dude? I don't, I don't know. I don't understand it. I think, I think Mac, honestly, he's a COVID puppy, so he's been next to me yeah. pretty much his whole life. Gomez. He goes crazy when I... He's probably going crazy right now at the house, oh, barking shit. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you're... Um, you're constantly trying to improve. Is that, is that your exercise? Do you go to the gym or anything? I do a lot of body weight, push-ups, squats, sit-ups, oh, okay. shit like that. The basics. But rather than, you know, hit the gym three, four times a week, I'm doing this shit every day. Every day. No day. I'm, I probably walk so much. That's why I'm so damn skinny. That's why I can't put on weight. Like if I if I were if I were to try to get in the gym, and when I do get in the gym, I'm gonna be living so I have to lift super heavy because I'm gonna just burn the calories. I'm I have to eat a shit ton and I have to lift a shit ton. So I gotta get ready for that. Are you doing any like soul, like for your soul and your inner being, anything to like improve that? I'm the reason I'm asking is because I've been trying to like. Dig within. I guess because I've been sober. I've been sober for eleven days. Not that long, but I've been thinking about okay, a lot no, of shit on the inside. That's good. And I'm like, and how do I improve that aspect of myself? I guess without doing psychedelics. By the way, I'm just gonna throw that out there. See, I wasn't even gonna mention <laughs> that. Know, okay. See, see, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't even gonna mention that. For me, it started with, you know, just breathing, meditation, just listening to what's going on up there. Coping to what's going on up there, controlling what's going yeah, on up there. Controlling, that's a fucking hard one. You know what I'm when saying? When you're like doing meditation, is it in silence? I like to, but a lot of the times you can't just get in the silence. That's what I was going to ask you. Does your brain just? Because when I sit in silence, I I can't. For some reason, I just, it's crazy. I'll go crazy, bro. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the whole the story of how it just it, it became a part of my life because I do it every day. Um, I started it because of basketball. Like I learned that, you know, Kobe and Jordan were, you know, doing team meditations with coach uh, Phil Jackson and shit. And so, you know, you do what the greats do. And so, you know, when you're trying to be great, you do what the greats do. And so it just started with just literally 20 minutes straight, just sitting or laying down, trying to stop everything, all the thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Trying to catch it and just, okay, quiet. Catch it, you know, quiet. It started with that. And the reason why I was doing it because, you know, you train and that training would come right into effect because you are in a state of flow. You can enter the state of flow, you know, in and I don't know if I'm making any sense, but. To like, me, you are. So. You know what I'm saying? Like all that training you go through, it's just easier to access. You don't have to think about it because your mind is clear. It's all read and react. And so that's where it started with, you know, just being able to clear my mind and just shut that motherfucker down, yeah, shut it up I so I can, you know what I'm saying? So I can just be at peace. And then it started with um, learn about chakras and shit, you know, clearing chakras and shit. Chakra healings and all that shit. You can do that. You can apparently do that shit like on your own with certain meditations, guided meditations, and shit. Just getting into fucking nature. That's why I go to the park every day, just being around trees, being around the grass. Like you touch on a tree 10, 20 minutes, it's like people people say I'm crazy for saying this, but like it's kind of a it's a healing. You know what I'm saying? Nature is, is is kind of a for me, it's a healing. Like just being out there in the quiet, not really thinking about, you know, what's going on, what you gotta do later. It just clears my mind and it kinda gets me ready for the day. And <laughs> shit. Cold showers. Those work. Dude. It'll get you on another level, especially if you sober. Eesh. It's gonna get you on another level. I know people do that ice bath shit, so I imagine yeah, it's a little too. version of it. I, I don't know if I could do ice bath, to be honest. I wanna try it. I don't know if I could do that. But cold showers, that'll get your mind so strong, so disciplined, you'll be able to 
anything that's most likely to come through, you know, problems come throughout the day, you'll be able to handle it because she took a cold ass shower. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's it's kind of that's another life hack um, for longevity. It gets your blood going. It gets your natural immune system just going. You're healing your the body's it heals itself. You know what I'm saying? And it jump starts that. Yeah, dude, that's one of the things I'm going to try this year is to improve my, you know, like you were saying, get a grasp on my mind. Because, mm -hmm. man, that motherfucker just yeah. goes and goes and goes and goes and never stops. And the hardest man. part, we're, we're influenced by so many, so God. many different things. That's another thing. Solitude. Yeah, You got to be able to influence yourself. Not that, you know other people's good influences should be pushed away but you know what i'm saying sometimes you gotta you gotta figure out who you are you know what i'm saying sometimes it takes just an hour or two a day just being by yourself just chilling kicking it just seeing seeing what's on your mind and then trying to you know harness it yeah man you want to hear a story about how weird my mind is what <laughs> We got our dreams interpreted on Friday. Really? And this girl gave me a blessing, and I was, I've was i been freaked out ever since that fucking day. Like, I've been freaked out. I have not stopped thinking about it. And I was like, I was thinking about that today. I'm like, man, I am weak. My mind is weak. Dude, and I'm like, you know, I want to be, you know, a good good host, a good, yeah. a good strong fucking man. Not going to yeah, lie. Yeah. I'm like, no, Fuck, my brain's fucking weak, and man. And that's what is, bro. Because that girl got a fucking stranglehold on me right now. <sighs> you did a good job, woman. <laughs> Whatever your fucking goal was. I was like, and at least you got the drive because a lot of men don't have the drive yeah. just to be better, self-improve. Just be better. Be the best version of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Please don't use that against me, people. I'm being vulnerable on the podcast. I'm just letting y'all know. That was, uh, you know, yeah, but bro, I'm trying to. Like, I'm not. I'm on. I told you I'm, bro, I'm open to understanding yeah, everybody. Oh, well, not everybody's like you. Some people are mean. But I was thinking like, you know, you got to be strong in your mind. Before you like me and you were trying to accomplish a goal, right, right. It's, it's gonna so, be a so lot of many, bullshit. You know, so many uh, speed bumps, yeah, roadblocks, shit. You can get through, but it's gonna take time. Speed bumps a little quicker. Roadblocks, you may have to, you know, push shit aside, move shit out the way. But you got, yeah, you got to have the mindset to not quit. And I, I so that stuff helps you, yeah, when things get yeah. hard. It, it keeps me in check. It keeps me out of my emotions because as sometimes, most of the time in my life as a man, you can't do what you feel all the time. You got to do some shit that you don't want to do and you got to have the right man mindset for it. You know what I'm saying? You can't go in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Say if you're in a job, you can't go in that bitch with a bad attitude. You're just making your life worse and you're making the, the energy in the place worse. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to just deal, deal with shit, deal with shit. Life got so many problems, so many problems that you're going to come across and you just got to have that, that fight in you, that dog in you to not quit. Got to have that dog in you. <laughs> Are you a religious person in any of that stuff? Um, I'm more spiritual, spiritual than religious. I grew up religious. My mom, you know, she had us religiously at church. A lot, but even her, she's she's as as we've all grown as people. She's on the more spiritual side too. So I'm more spiritual than religious. Did you go to one of those churches with the, like the gospel, like the choir singing and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Always yeah, wanted to go yeah, to one yeah, of those. Yeah. By the way, yeah, the saying. typical, yeah. ooh, the stereotypical black. It's fun. It's fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's fun. Okay, it's I was fun. Going to the black church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go to one yeah. one day, dude. I'm gonna have to find one out here. <laughs> yeah, it'd well, be fun little experience. Yeah, you guys get into it, man. And like, they get into it. The music, like and, music you know, has a vibration. You know, you you get into tune to something else. And yeah, it's just to have you on a higher yeah. vibration, yeah. like joy, gratefulness, you know, happiness, and that's good. You don't want to be at church feeling like shit, <laughs> unless you're learning a lesson. You know what I'm saying? That's true. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, church is good. It'll teach you. It'll teach you shit like shit in the Bible, like stories in the Bible. You could apply to, you know, real life. And like a lot of other, you know, religions, you know, the writings in there apply to real life. Like, and that's why shh, 
I'm just open to anything positive. You, Do you know think what I'm there's saying? a greater power on there? Do you think like like a God? I exists? want to. Yeah. Just how I was raised, I want I want to. You know that's what how I'm I saying? feel too. I, I want, really to. want there to be something. But it's so many, you know, different theories and other forms of you but, know, so like, when you're doing these meditations and this nature stuff you do you feel like you tap into something else that's not to be honest how i see it because i feel like it's more spiritual because like all that tapping into nature clearing your mind you know healing yourself that's tools that god put here for us to use you know what I'm saying? If you want to use the Christian background, like all that's tools, meditation, prayer is a form of meditation. People don't realize that. So them tools can be used in posit in positivity in anybody's lives. I don't care what religion. It may be practiced more in one religion than the other, but I feel like it could be used. I hope this isn't a weird turn. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you have any ghost experience? Ghost I haven't had any ghost no, experience, no. so I can't say I particularly particularly believe in ghosts. I haven't had no experiences. Do you so. watch like scary movies? Any of that shit? Not that? really. No. Not really. Damn, I was hoping you had a ghost story for us. Did you see my <laughs> post the other day? Which one? On Monday, I think I put it up. It was uh, like two years ago. We had a ghost experience in here. What? And I fucking put it on on Instagram. Here, let me send it. I have it. Yeah, I haven't. I'll send not, the video. That I, not that I've, I'll send I. I'll send Recognize. Did you post the post? There? No, I just put it on the, my story. But I will send it to so we can watch it. I want to know what you think. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Huh? <laughs> Is that you? Right? That's how I was feeling. I, 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 was I, haven't had, today. I haven't had no experiences, <laughs> but I don't cut other period, other people's experiences short. You know. Oh, I've had multiple. But I was also being a bad person. Oh, shit. And person. I'm inclined to believe you. You know, whatever story you tell me, bro, I trust your judgment, you know, through the whole thing. What you thought that was is what it was. <laughs> Sounds not that loud. You can turn it up on me. Just put it, push it up a little bit more. She would like use like her, her weird you think. long thumbnail to like carve things into the wax and like put coins and like shove them in there and yeah. yeah. And she would like yeah, That's she would like tie certain color ribbons. Really she doesn't fuck with it like that, but it's. That's why I feel like what was it? I don't know. No. I've Nope, 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 nope. Maybe, right? Sorry. Yeah. She would like. I don't know. Like, what well, was that? A scream? I don't know. What the fuck it was. It, was it wasn't like, a it dog. It literally anything? sounded like a dog bark. But there is no. But like, <laughs> it was like right here, and there was there. nothing there. Like it literally was like right in between the two of them, the bark. What? That's what I'm saying, bro. Yeah. Like even like Juan, like you see him kind of like. Because yeah. he was right here, right? Yeah. So. yeah. We used to not have the curtain, so it was kind of open. We heard that. We were like, yeah, oh. no, but it was literally right next to him. That's scary. It is scary. But, bro. Yeah, we stopped the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we if you see a shadow and cone your eye, let us know. <laughs> yeah, we can Shoot, do that. We, we thought we saw, because oh, during I the summer. About that. Jesus. I forgot about that. During the, during the summer, uh, we have the garage door open. And I was sitting right there in the corner of my eye. It, it's, it looked like something white, like just went across. Mm. And then I didn't say anything. And then Roy like looked at me. Because he, he saw the same. Yeah, and it. then he said, did you see that? And I was like, yeah. And so we, we don't know what it was, but we, me and him saw the same thing. <laughs> Dude. <that's laughs> it, it just looked like someone like peeked over. Really? Yeah. He's fucking creepy. Like, around this. He was creepy. I just remembered that. <laughs> I was a little, yeah, well, that is scary. Yeah, man. I don't know. I was thinking about spiritual stuff and I thought about ghosts. Shoot. I don't know. I've yet to have my experience with ghosts. I don't know if you're open your mind to that, but don't. It's scary. Don't? I don't know. I'm not afraid of anything. They no. probably there to fucking teach me a lesson. <laughs> hey, dude, I've been watching you. <laughs> yeah. I think it's inevitable. I think it's going to hit you. In yeah, whether you can. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Shoot, we'll see. Yeah. 
Shoot. One of my friends told me. I guess it won't catch me off guard now. I'm expecting it. There you go. One of my friends told me a scary story where he uh, was closing up uh, his church and he had to, no no unusual experiences he ever had, but he had to go uh, turn off the light in the basement. And the basement light was up here and the stairs are right there in front of him. He said as soon as he turned it off, uh, he swears there was a, as soon as he turned it off, he saw like a shadow of a, of a little boy, like looking at him, like was standing in the middle of the stairs, mm. was just looking straight up at him. And he took it was he said it was one of those where like you, there's ghost experiences you have where you're like, what the hell was that? No, that shit was like in his face. And he mm. just took off. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen to you now, brother? <laughs> Even- we'll see. I'll be chopping it up with him. I'm not mm-hmm. scared of shit. Yeah, man. But uh, I did enjoy this conversation with you. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate you coming on. I appreciate um, y'all having me. Where can they listen to your music? I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple Music. I'm on YouTube. I'm on SoundCloud. Pretty much all major platforms. Double O Mac. Cap- uh, capital O. Lowercase O. Mac. And your song, January 14th, it'll be out. Yes. Higher Vibration, the video shot by my boy. And you Grim shot, shot it. it. So we'll be dropping. Put Saturday. the link to that on uh in the description this will be out a little bit later than that but cool yeah I'll appreciate let the people it. know it'll be Friday 13th on Friday just remembered it's gonna be a fun day oh uh, yeah but uh, we can do this again man. yeah just and let then, me know what slots you I, have open I'm, I'm willing to come through again hell yeah and we doing that the, oh yeah next week yeah hit me up about that bet um, yeah dude I look forward to seeing you at shows and stuff hell hope you yeah. perform I wanna be there yeah I'm gonna be out there either way whether I'm on stage or not I'm gonna be popping out hell yeah Bradley uh, follow me at Bradley Noel Garcia and Lords of Film. I gotta say Lords of Film now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Follow Lords of Film uh, with the Z, and uh, you can follow me at Texas Chainsaw Alchemist. Yep. Uh, Snake Pit Studios. Uh, Patreon.com/slash Snake Pit Studios, mm-hmm. guys. One love. We'll see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>